Today I'm looking at the just released specs of the Lab Pano Pilot 1 and wondering who is this for? Is it an alternative to a camera like the Kandao KuCam 368K or is it a mini me Pi Soft Tech Pilot Era 8K, which it really, really looks like. Watch as I go through some of the specs that have been released and compare them to both the Pilot Era and the KuCam 8K, and then I'll give you my view. And I'd be keen to hear what you think too, so make sure you drop me a comment down below and feel free to have a conversation down there between yourselves too. The more, the merrier. Oh, and if we haven't met before, thanks for coming to my channel to watch. I really appreciate it. My name is Saab Johal, and welcome to my channel, which is all about great mobile video and editing for great results. Please take a look around and if you want to make sure you see more of my content on 360 and action cam videos, how I make them and some cool edits, please consider subscribing. So overnight some of the specs of the Lab Pano Pilot 1 were leaked. Well actually they weren't leaked, they were perhaps deliberately published so that people could find it easily and make it look like it was a leak because a leak is way more exciting and bound to get more publicity, right? Okay, I took the bait and ran the website in Chinese through Google Translate which means it came up with some stuff that is pretty jargony and hard to really know what it means. But instead of just telling you what it says on the website, I thought it would be good to compare the data that's available so far and maybe go through and compare what we know about each of these three cameras, the Pilot 1, the Pilot Era and the KuCam 8K and what it might mean. I wanted to know what solid data we had to compare rather than company jargon and proprietary brand speak. And I thought that might be useful for you too. So in my data sheet coming up, I'm going to compare what we know about the sensor, the lenses, the features of the built-in touchscreen for all the cameras, the video and photo resolutions, the dimensions of the cameras, including their weight, how much storage they offer, their battery size and shooting length that they can support, and the audio features too. Is that cool? Okay, here's what I've got in my data sheet. Let's go through this one by one. The Pilot One, just like the Pilot Era, has four sides in, on this rectangular kind of shape, and it has a lens on each side of the camera. These are one over 2.3 inch lenses, each at 12 megapixels, which seems to be pretty common. The uncommon thing about the KuCam 8K, however, is the two 1 over 1.7 inch sensors, each rated at 20 megapixels. Now these 1 over 1.7 inch sensors are 54% larger than the 1 over 2.3 inch sensors and have an image circle that is more than 70% larger than the image circle of a 1 over 2.3 inch sensor. The 1 over 1.7 inch sensors also tend to be less noisy than the smaller 1 over 2.3 inch sensors too, and that's due to a few factors including their surface area. It will be interesting to see what the footage looks like once it's released. At the moment, there are just a couple of sketchy videos that I couldn't get to play very well. You might have more luck. See the link down in the description for it. The lenses in the Pilot 1 seem to be rated at f2.28, which means a more shallow depth of field is going to be possible than for the Pilot Era 8K. But at f2.0, the KuCam 8K looks like it's going to be able to suck more light in than those two lab pano cameras. How will this make a difference? Well, it kind of depends upon what you're going to use the cameras for. I'll come back to that later. A touchscreen seems to be quite popular in cameras out recently or about to be released. Of course, it depends upon what those screens are capable of doing too. Compare the relative non-functionality of the GoPro Max touchscreen to the KuCam 8K touchscreen where you can scroll around live in 360. We don't know much about the functionality of the Pilot 1 screen yet, but it appears to be a tiny bit smaller than that on the KuCam and quite a lot smaller than the bigger brother sister, the Pilot Era. I imagine, however, it will be pretty functional. The Pilot Era was pretty much a standalone device, and I don't see why the Pilot 1 would break that formula. Although, to make it smaller, I see that they've taken a modular approach so that you're able to buy 4G and 5G capability modules as connectable add-ons, whereas the Pilot Era had 4G capability and a space for a SIM card built in. Now, video and photo resolution is a complete black hole. We know nothing about the possible photo and video resolutions about the Pilot 1, so we need to guess by looking at the Pilot era. I can't imagine they'll be too different, but the two things that really set the KuCam 8K apart from the Pilot era are the slow motion at 120 frames per second at 4K resolution and the Photo DNG 8 RAW capability producing what they are calling APS-C sensor capability equivalents. Now I think that's a big ask, but with those sensors, 
I think the KuCam is probably going to get closer in terms of photo quality than the Pilot 1 is going to. We may yet be surprised by some fancy computational photography, but at the moment the hardware limitations look a bit too difficult to overcome. At under half the weight of the Pilot era and considerably slimmer, it looks far more pocketable than the Pilot era. And although a different form factor to the KuCam 8K, they are comparable in weight, though the KuCam is a touch lighter than the Pilot 1, which is interesting in terms of applications where you might be using the camera in non-static situations. The KuCam then is probably slightly better suited to moving around and more action cam type situations, although there may not be a lot in it practically. The only way to tell would be to actually try them head to head. So does anyone want to send me some beta tested camera samples? The Pilot Era has a whopping 512 gigabytes built in for its intense applications for producing virtual tours and other mapping types of activity. The Pilot 1 has a more modest 64 gigabytes built in, which mirrors that of the KuCam 8K, and you can see why. Purely trying to strike the balance between adequate storage and ability to be expanded through micro SD cards to save weight. I couldn't see anything certain recorded in data regarding the Pilot 1 about whether storage was expandable, but if it isn't, I can't see it selling too well at all. The monster battery in the Pilot Era was a beast to carry on powering the Pilot Era while it live streamed Google Street Maps and everything in between. And it's also removable, which has been a gripe for the buyers of the KuCam 8K who wish that this battery was removable too. Now the Pilot 1 battery is rated as being able to power the camera for two hours, whereas the KuCam battery is rated at about 45 minutes of solid use. It remains to be seen if the Pilot 1 battery is removable though, meaning that you can have a spare in your bag too instead of hooking the camera up to a power bank to keep using it. Now the Pilot 1 looks like it might have one over the Pilot era here, but has the same capability in the KuCam 8K in that it has a built-in 3.5 millimeter audio port enabling you to attach an external dual channel mic. Lab Pano have also indicated that they might have an additional peripheral on the way enabling a panoramic microphone to be used. So it'll be interesting to see that when it's available, although it's a bit of a niche market, it's a strong one though. Okay, what else have I noticed? Well, the Pilot 1 seems to have a nine axis gyroscope and pilot steady stabilization, which might be interesting, offering real-time image stabilization. I guess you may view the image as it's live streaming and recording as stable. The Pilot 1 will also have what they're calling an advanced thermal architecture, meaning that it can work in up to 45 degrees centigrade Celsius, which I think is pretty extreme, but something that people are worried about using their cameras in hot conditions or over an extended period of time when heat will build up in the camera, so that could be a real advantage for the Pilot 1. The Pilot 1 is Google Street View certified, but it looks like you need to buy a GPS component that adds on and clips onto the bottom of the camera, meaning that it's a step down from the Pilot era. I imagine I'll have to take GPS coordinates from your phone in order to work in those sorts of applications or environment. However, I'm not sure. As well as the GPS module that seems to be available or will be available, the Pilot 1 seems to have a fair few accessories planned, for example, a waterproof and a dive case too. So maybe they see this as an action camera or used for different industry purposes too. Lapano have also stressed that they continually developed and released updates for the Pilot era at a rate of about twice a month. And they say that the Pilot 1 can expect a similar amount of development and new features being added after the camera is released, which again seems to be a bit of a pattern. Let's just hope the camera is released in a market ready state in the first place. And of course, we don't yet know what the price point will be or what the footage will look like, except for some very brief footage on the website, which I couldn't get to play very well at all. So it doesn't really bode well, but I'm really, really keen to see some footage out there. Now, what are you gonna use this camera for? To my mind, this seems to be less of a competitor to the KuCam 8K, but more of an affordable and possibly usable version of the Pilot era for people looking to create virtual tours and panoramic or mapping applications. So to that end, it's probably more of a camera that has professional applications rather than for consumers. In the information released about the camera, LabPano says that you'll be able to directly share virtual roaming guides, whatever they are, to social media or embed custom websites. And now this seems to be key, that their product won't rely on third party platforms, which tend to be really expensive, to create real estate or public area virtual tours. So if that's what you're looking for and the pilot era has been out of your reach, 
the pilot one could be very interesting indeed. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please give this video a like if you found it useful and maybe consider subscribing for more of my content too. Here's some more of my videos that you might find interesting or useful. Please take a look around and thanks again for watching. Cheers and go well.